But both of these guys have had some real battles when they went head-to-head. -head. Last year, Reynolds averaged about 20 points a game. Flynn, 21 points a game. This is a premier matchup of two of the best guards in the country. And Syracuse led five and four here at Wachovia against Villanova. Here's the starting five for the Cues today. Johnny Flynn, who says this is a payback game today, along with Devendorf in the backcourt. Onowaku battling knee tendonitis, but he'll start along with Paul Harris. And Rick Jackson has really come out of late for the Orange. Villanova 18 and 4. They are fifth in the Big East. Reynolds and Redding who had a double double against Providence in their last game in the backcourt. Dante Cunningham, one of the most improved players in the Big East, along with Shane Clark, and a guy that Jay Wright says has been outstanding of late for the Wildcats. That's Dwayne Anderson, who's averaging 12 points per game over his last six. Johnny Flynn said this is going to be a good game. We have a little rivalry going on, but I can't wait to go down there and really give it to them after they beat us last year. He was also quoted as saying that this is a payback game. Now, Syracuse won here last year, but lost at the Dome and then lost at Madison Square Garden to Villanova. Big in a game that may have vaulted Villanova into the NCAA tournament and knocked Syracuse out. Well, you mentioned before the Onowaku injury. You know, he's hobbled a bit. That has more than just the ob obvious implications. In the last eight meetings between these teams, the squad with more rebounds won the game. And Onowaku, obviously, a man on the boards. We'll see what Syracuse can do to try to help him out. And Syracuse will start with the basketball. Here's Johnny Flynn. He's the team in scoring and assist for Syracuse. The Villanova starts out in man-to-man. -man. And you can see, obviously, the attempt to deny the wings. Worried about Syracuse executing the you know, type of offense that really did point over some problems. And Diebendorf traveled on the first possession of the game. Jim Beheim tied with Dean Smith for the most 20-win seasons. Beheim looking for his 31st 20-win season, and there are two wins away from that this year. Syracuse in a 2-3 zone. They had been playing more man than I've ever seen them play before, but I think the injuries have slowed their front line and try to conserve energy. They're going to resort to that zone more often than not. Shane Clark making his third start of the season. Gets the first basket of the game for Villanova. Lynn off the bounce. A long three. Way off. But Jackson is there with the stick back. And we talked about the tendonitis for Onowaku, but Rick Jackson has done more than his share. One of the most improved players in the conference this year. Really stepped it up inside, both on the boards as well as giving him some scoring punch. Yeah, we talk about Cunningham being one of the most improved players. Jackson certainly got to be in that mix, but he commits a foul there on Reynolds. We'll see if they call it a shooting foul. No, they don't. Jay Wright trying to lead Villanova to its fifth consecutive NCAA tournament. That hasn't happened since the 80s when they went seven straight years. Those Wildcats have won four straight. It seems like they're starting to peak and gel just at the right time. Here's Anderson for three. Dwayne Anderson shooting 36% from behind the arc. He's healthy after missing six games earlier in the season with a stress reaction in his left foot. And we talked about gelling at the right time. That's a big reason why Dwayne Anderson. You know, Jay Wright told us that with Anderson out there able to shoot the three, they can still play, at least for them, what they consider big having a 6'6 guy out there instead of going with the smaller lineup. Follows on Redding, his first, first down to Lenovo. That was a six three pointer that Anderson's made in his last nine attempts. Kickball. Shot clock stays at 22. Here's Paul Harris, who bounced back after three subpar games with a double-double against West Virginia. 
Swain trying to take Reynolds off the bounce. Finds Jackson and Reynolds knocked it away. Syracuse quickly back on defense. Double team comes to Cunningham. Yeah, very aggressive 2-3 and forcing the turnover. Syracuse, even though they are going to resort to more zone as opposed to man, they're going to play it very aggressively and goes into Cunningham, and he's the one guy that Syracuse does not want to beat them. And so they're trying to get the ball out of his hands and force the turnover. Well, their defense was much better against West Virginia after Providence scored 100 against them. Providence put up 91 in a loss to Villanova earlier this week. They were down 20 in that game and came back against the Wildcats as Harris misfires and boarded by Clark. Again, the double team comes on Redding, able to fire it out of there to Reynolds. The skip to the corner, and the three won't go, though, for Anderson. Out to Flynn, looking to push the pace. Batter away from behind by Cunningham. Third turnover by Syracuse. Reynolds to the hole on Anawaku. No foul called. Rebounded by Redding. He scores, and a foul. Well, we're going to emphasize it again. The last eight games between these two teams, the team with the most rebounds won. And you can see that point is not lost on either of these teams. Battling the boards, playing physical. And Villanova just scrapping right now. The smaller team, but a lot quicker to the ball than Syracuse. Foul on Harris's first, second team foul on Syracuse. 8-2 to two, Villanova. And when I say the smaller team, not necessarily in height. Yeah. But you take a look at those bodies out there. Onowaku and Harris and even Jackson kind of dwarf the front line of Villanova with their girth. Devendorf fouled on the way to the basket before the shot. And that's two on Redding, two on Villanova. Well, Eric Devendorf, one of the best one-on-one -on -one players in the conference. You know, obviously shooting with the left hand right there. He's Got an excellent first step. Not the quickest guy out there, but he certainly knows how to play. Johnny Flynn, on the other hand, is pretty quick, but he couldn't hit the shot there. Flynn 0 for 2 from the field. Nice look. Cunningham to the basket. 10-2. Villanova, timeout Syracuse. Excellent use of the bounce pass. Villanova doing a great job fundamentally right now in executing their offense. Well, Syracuse already three turnovers and one field goal. Villanova leading by eight. And except for the Cunningham miscue a couple of possessions ago, they've been executing very well against this zone. Nice bounce pass by Dwayne Anderson. You know, lost start of the bounce pass. Not enough guys throw it, particularly in that situation. Trying to catch cutters mid-form, mid-step, going to the basket. It's a nice pass to throw. And again, good defense by Villanova. That hit the official and stayed in bounds. And jump ball. It will go to Villanova on the alternate possession arrow. Great start for the Wildcats at home, leading by eight. Start for Villanova, leading 10-2. As Syracuse has turned it over four times. And unhappy uh, with some of the officiating so far are the Syracuse players. Well, the one thing they have to be unhappy about is the fact that they've turned the ball over four times thus far. And Villanova with five points off those four turnovers. Good reason for the lead. Every Villanova starter has a field goal except Scotty Reynolds, who had 31 points in his last game in a win over Providence. Good D by Flynn to break up the pass, but it will stay with Villanova. I was just talking about obviously using the bounce pass, but you can't throw it through that zone. You've got to be able to swing it around the horn. These guys are very active in the 2 3 Syracuse with hands. Moving their feet quickly. Dante Cunningham has really come on this year, improving his scoring from 10 points per game last year to almost 17 a game this season. Four of the 12 for Cunningham, and Rotten's off the bench, misfiring from three. And you see the block out by Cunningham. Villanova leaving nothing to chance, holding their block outs, keeping Syracuse off the board. Here's Cunningham. Rottens came in with a double team, got a hand on the ball, and again will stay with the Wildcats. 
Well, we talk about the improvement of Dante Cunningham. You take a look right here. Excellent ball movement. They get it to the sweet spot. And Cunningham reading it. Onowaku's not going to get up on him. He can bust that jumper. If he comes up, then he puts it on the floor and goes around him or he looks inside for the pass. But you got to read the middle guy in the 2-3 zone. Cunningham with a nice job there. Cunningham already with seven double-doubles this year. He had five in his first three years combined. We got a stoppage of play. One of the officials shaken up. I think it's Jim Haney that's a little banged up. And yeah, he's walking gingerly on that left leg. So we'll take a timeout as Villanova leads Syracuse 12 to 2. Five minutes gone by, first half. Well, referee Curtis Shaw came over to tell us that uh, his colleague Jim Haney suffered an injury to his Achilles. They're not sure as to the seriousness of it, but obviously it's keeping him from resuming. So only Shaw and Michael Stevens will officiate the remainder of this game unless Haney is able to return. Hey, just like the old days, man. Yeah. Go with two. Evendorf hasn't taken a shot yet. Syracuse without a point in the last four minutes. And a foul as Harris is shaken up, going to the basket. Boy, Harris looks like a guy that McNam might be able to throw to, doesn't he, at some point? Or well, hand off to. Yeah, really. Or, or get sacked by. <laughs> he's, got, he's got that kind of build. I was on Fisher for Villanova. You look at Paul Harris right there driving the gap. Obviously, Villanova a little bit too late to the play, but... Good assertive move by Paul Harris. Villanova, I mean, uh, Syracuse really needs somebody that's going to take charge a little bit out there offensively. What an amazing uh, year it was for McNabb after getting benched against Baltimore. He comes back and leads the Eagles to the NFC title game. Who'd they lose to win? <laughs> Did you see that? Uh, Cardinals. Okay, just checking. But a great year for McNabb. He amazingly gets booed as often as he gets cheered here in Philadelphia for all that he's done for that organization. Scotty Reynolds with his first three of the game, and Villanova leads by 11. Well, a combination of good ball movement and knocking down some shots. And, of course, Syracuse complying a little bit with turnovers. Devendorf hard to the basket. And Pena will get called for the foul, his first and the fourth on the Wildcats. Well, the one thing we can see right now, being down 11 points, Syracuse not settling for the jump shots. They're making an effort to get to the basket, draw some fouls. You see Dievendorf's numbers over the last three games. He's a terrific free throw shooter at 81%. At 22 points in the win against West Virginia. He had 33 against Villanova last year. North gets them both. Meanwhile, Villanova's made four straight shots from the field and on pace right now to score about 120. <laughs> you know, as much as Jim Beheim would moan about his team's defense, not that bad. <laughs> Reynolds letting another three go, almost banked it in. It was off balance when he took the shot. Rounds pokes it out to Devendorf. Jim Bayon says one of the biggest issues with his team, health. Andy Routens battling a sprained ankle, and we talked about the other injury to Onuaku. As the three goes for Devendorf, or it's a short rather, Fisher with the foul, but three free throws coming up. That's two on Fisher, five on Villanova. And that's enough to make the coach get up out of his seat and walk all the way to the end line and turn his head. Fouling the jump shooter, particularly the three-point shooter. At a time when your team's got some good momentum, and now this is kind of a momentum killer right here. 
And speaking of injuries, remember Dietendorf played just 10 games last year because of a knee injury. Routens out last year as well. Cunningham and Shane Clark come back into the game for Villanova. Christoph Ongadon will come in for the first time. Anawaku will go to the bench. They're monitoring his minutes. He played only 18 minutes against West Virginia. Talking about Anawaku. Well, Syracuse, not a good free throw shooting team, but Eric Devendorf is still one of the better foul shooters in the Big East, and that's why they're back in this game down six. Their last seven points coming from the line. Pena underneath got stripped by Ongadon. It'll stay with Villanova. Clark kicked it out to Reynolds and a foul on Johnny Flynn. His first, third on Syracuse. Well, Villanova's ball movement is really forcing Syracuse to come out and close on guys. And when you get guys coming at you, little ball fake, little movement either way will get them out of position. You can draw fouls. You can create opportunities. It's a nice job, again, moving the ball, forcing the defense to shift. Pena kicks it out, and Stokes three off the mark. It will go to Syracuse as it goes over the backboard. Missed shot, but that was a good example of inside out. You know, getting a good look by going inside, side, forcing the defense to collapse and then kicking it back out. Like I said, you can't say enough about the ball movement that's going over in the last several possessions. And Stokes had been hitting the three this year, but just one for his last nine. Syracuse with its fifth turnover of the first half. Reynolds into the paint, out to Clark. Rowdy's with the rebound. Four straight misses now for Villanova after four straight makes. The extra pass to Jackson by Ongenot, but a Villanova foul first. Well, I mentioned before that particularly the foul against the jump shooter by Corey Fisher. It's kind of deflating Villanova a bit right now. They're still getting good looks on the offensive end. They can't knock them down, but Syracuse feeling a lot more confident offensively. Ball was on Reynolds, his first sixth on Villanova, but then Syracuse turns it over with a travel. No sooner did I talk about confidence and leaving off a little bit too much confidence. Villanova 11 and 1 at home, 15 and 1 in the state of Pennsylvania. They're just three of three outside the state this year. Cunningham with a turnaround. Really improved his jumper this year. Yeah, just wonderful form, squaring up. Again, not afraid to take it. Cunningham with six points, the lead back to eight for Villanova. Harris's jumper won't go. Reynolds finds it open, man, and the three goes for Corey Stokes. Once again, inside out, this time off the penetration. You see Villanova 57%. Meanwhile, Syracuse without a field goal in the last seven minutes, but they're getting their points at the line, and Flynn is going to go to the free throw line as Reynolds commits his second foul. They know how to put people away. They're going to be a tough out. Flynn misses the first free throw. Well, Syracuse beat Memphis earlier this season. One of the three key non-league wins, including Kansas and Florida, and that's one of the reasons why Jim Beheim, of course, wants to win every single game the rest of the way, but feels that if their conference record is around 500, that they should get into the NCAA tournament, although based on the last couple of years, nothing's a guarantee. <laughs> no question about that. But beating Florida and Kansas back-to-back -back certainly helped uh, Syracuse cause. Villanova pretty good at home so far this year, but Syracuse has had success at Wachovia Center. Villanova able to break the pressure and get a layup. Dwayne Anderson to the basket, beautifully done by the Wildcats. I think that press is a little too passive right now, able to get the ball up quickly and get that advantage break. One shot, no rebound is Devendorf is off target. 
Well, you asked who was going to play the point. Corey Fisher, you know, kind of got that herky-jerky style change of speed and does a good look right there inside. Fisher playing with two fouls. Rick Jackson committed that one as second foul. Well, there's the press right there, but the coverage, the double team was good. The coverage left something to be lacking, and then once you get that ball outside and you push it up the floor, you get an advantage opportunity, and Villanova broke it like they designed it. Kane Clark shooting two. Well, Villanova coming into this year after a sweet 16 a year ago as a 12 seed. Remember, they beat Clemson and the knocked off Siena. Lost to eventual national champion Kansas. Still, people didn't think much of this Villanova team line coming into the year, even though most of the guys returned from that squad. But they proved a lot of people wrong. I mean, I'm not so sure it's underrating Villanova as much as they might have been overrating some of the teams in the Big East, even though it's still probably one of most the most competitive conference. Beautiful move by Corey Fisher. And Villanova leads it 25 to 11. Syracuse with one field goal in almost 10 minutes. And another Syracuse turnover. That's seven. Stokes got runs in the air, and he'll go to the line to shoot three. Well, the arm is just totally out of whack right now. No rhythm on the offensive end, trying a little bit too hard, even though, again, they have to continue to be assertive since they're not knocking anything down from the perimeter. And on the defensive end, you know, that foul of jump shooter bug is bitten them as well, and, and they can ill afford it at this point in time. First foul on Routens, fifth on Syracuse. They're checking the monitor to see if it was a two or a three. Curtis Shaw and Michael Stevens are the only officials left because Jim Haney is out with an Achilles injury, at least for now. Already 12 fouls, so at least uh, Curtis and Michael are getting a good workout in. You take a look right there. Looks like that right foot. You know, that looked like the right foot was behind that white line. That red line is the professional line. And that's a, that's a three-point attempt. This will be our third time we've seen someone go to the line to shoot three already in this first half. You've got to be amazed at that, man. <laughs> you know, it gets drummed into a player's head not to foul a jump shooter. You can test them, challenge them, get a hand up. But you're not going to block it. I mean, that, that's why guys get off their feet, because they think they're going to block the jump shot. And it's rare that you see guys blocking shots on the perimeter. Villanova, a very good free throw shooting team. Stokes at 83%. Now Syracuse, we talked about those wins against Florida, Kansas, Memphis. They also beat Virginia in non-conference play. In three of those four games, they were down by double figures and came back to win. Might be a tougher test, though, in conference play at Villanova down 17 when you only have one field goal and seven turnovers. The extra pass by Routens to Flynn. Syracuse now one of nine from the floor. One shot, no rebound again. And another Syracuse foul as Onowaku bumps Fisher. First foul on Arinze Onowaku, and that's the 16th foul on Jim Beheim's squad. Yeah, you got to have some kind of discipline defensively. I know the game's starting to get away from Syracuse, but, you know, you don't bail out guys. Fisher was trapped kind of in no man's land with the big fella on him. All Onowaku had to do was stand there with his hands extended in the air to make it a difficult play for Fisher. Instead, he fouls him. He gives him an opportunity to build this lead, push this lead out. And if you're Jim Beheim, there's not much you can do in terms of going to the bench for a spark. He really only plays seven, sometimes eight guys. And they've had a couple guys uh, go down with injuries. Duke Jardine, freshman Mookie Jones. Both out for the season. Jardine actually redshirting. 8.40 since the last field goal. And finally, they get one to go. Tipped in by Jackson off the Devendorf miss. And when you're not shooting the ball particularly well, that's what you need. Guys that will go make an effort to go get it. Second chance opportunities. And actually, when you get some success with second chance opportunities, gives the jump shooters a lot more confidence to just put it up there. A steal by Harris. Three on two for Syracuse. Flynn lost it out of bounds, though. 
It's not often you see Johnny Flynn make that kind of mistake. Kind of too much in a hurry. And look at Syracuse right there with their backs turned. Give up a dunk to Dwayne Anderson. Jim Another Be Syracuse timeout. Jim Beheim has seen enough right now. That last play was a total lack of effort by his guys. And he is mad. Can't come back on defense with this kind of deficit with your back's turned to the ball and sauntering back. And I know right in front of his face, Jim Beheim has got to be reading these guys the right act. Well, you and I talked with Coach Beheim before the game, and usually you get a pretty good read as to what he thinks of his team based on, you know, what he tells you before the game. And he just didn't seem real thrilled with the way his team was playing lately, even though they beat West Virginia the other night. And here they just give up an easy one. Yeah, you saw the two guards. Devendorf wasn't even looking. You know, no one else really paid any attention. Nobody communicating. Wake up. 14 Villanova points off of eight Syracuse turnovers. 11 nothing in terms of fast break points. And now the guy that sometimes starts the fast break for Syracuse, Johnny Flynn on the bench with the orange down 18 to Villanova. Both baskets by Syracuse have been Rick Jackson putbacks as Paul Harris goes hard to the basket and will go to the line. That's the 18 foul on Villanova and the first on Shane Clark. Four times as many turnovers as field goals. Oh, man. Uh, this is a, a, obviously one of the best offensive teams they're not the best offensive teams in the Big East. Yeah, they lead the league in shooting. But just 2 of 11 so far in this game. Meanwhile, they're near the bottom in free throw shooting, yet they're 9 of 11 so far at the line. Imagine if they weren't hitting their free throws, what the score might be. They're 10 of 12 now at the strike. And you know, that's exactly what Jay Wright is saying. Why are we putting them on the line? We're fouling jump shooters. I mean, that drive by Harris, okay, I can understand that. But they put a couple of jump shooters on the line. Good hands by Devendorf. But Pena maintains control. And Anderson stepped on the end line. Fourth Villanova turnover. But 31 Wildcat points in 11 minutes. After putting up 94 on Providence the other night, another Syracuse turnover. Paul Harris begs to differ, but you know, at this point in time, again, down 17, no time to argue with the officials. You got to get back and you got to dig in. Stokes three off the mark. Clark out battles Harris. And a foul called on Harris. That's two on him. Well, again, I guess that's a little bit of disgust with the last call. And obviously Jim Beheim wants to talk over with the officials as well. Talk about digging in. It's about putting a body on someone and then going to get it. 17 foul, so a one-and-one one situation. Clark missed the front end. Home it out with a rebound. With a nice pass, but a missed dunk by Jackson. However, he was fouled. Shane Clark picks up his second foul and the ninth on the Wildcats. Well, Andy Rounds, nice delivery with the left hand, in fact. Right on the money, and it's hard to believe that Jackson missed that. But that's kind of been the kind of day that Syracuse has had so far. Rick Jackson now. 12 of his last 29 at the free throw line. 55% overall in the season at the strike. One of a couple guys on Syracuse that shoot it better from the field than they do from the line. 0 for 2 on that trip. Fisher quickly back up the floor, lead for Pena. Pena brick the pull up J and rebounded by Jackson. Harris finds an open route. Can't hit a three, though. Syracuse now 2 of 12 from the floor. Fisher all the way to the basket again. Left-handed that time. He can tear it up. He had 21 earlier this year against Marquette. Averages 10 per game on the year. 
Here's Fisher again. Cunningham gets the roll. It's a 21 point go and over lead. And how about that being the polar opposite of what's happening in Syracuse? Shots going in and out, and here's going over. Gets the bounce, and that time it finally falls. Rick Jackson. He's the only guy that has a field goal. He's got three of them in this game for Syracuse. And he'll go to the line to try to complete the three point play. But I tell you what, the biggest problem Syracuse has is that their defense is a sieve. The Waters Park. Corey Fisher complies with a nice little move. Great losses. They got to play UCLA. It's a team that was top ten going into that game with North Carolina. Well, they got to. They got to. They definitely have to plug the dike now, man. Meanwhile, Rick Jackson knocks down a free throw, and he has been about 40 percent from the line in his last several games, but able to hit that one. Meanwhile, Syracuse with only three field goals and nine turnovers in this game. And down 18 points to Villanova. Cunningham makes it a 20-point deficit again. Yeah, he has definitely done some work over the last couple of years on that 15-footer. No hesitation by Cunningham. And it looks so nice. Yeah, he's 5-6 to six length from the field, 10 points. Good rotation, everything. Johnny Flynn back in, good high-low by Onowaku. The extra pass by Jackson, and Harris will go to the line. Although you wonder why Rick Jackson is passing the ball. He's the only guy that has a field goal. Three to be exact. For Syracuse. Meanwhile, Pena commits a second foul. Five different players for Jay Wright have committed two personals. Paul Harris, 72% free throw shooter. Harris bounced back with a double-double against West Virginia after not starting versus Providence. He had missed a couple practice leading up to that game and said the biggest thing that had disappointed him about how he had been playing was his lack of rebounding. But he, for lack of a better term, rebounded in a big way against West Virginia with 13 boards in that contest. Three won't fall for Stokes. And Flynn gets to the loose ball, trying to fight through the double team. Numbers for the Orange, three on one. Harris finds Jackson. Jackson now with four field goals. That was a nice job by Paul Harris, not only to deliver the ball on the money, but to avoid the offensive foul. Even though Fisher tried to give it the best act. Jackson with nine. Again, he's the only Syracuse player with a made basket from the floor in this game. The other points, 13 of the 21 coming to the foul line to Syracuse. And Jackson with good defense there. Hurt himself on the play, though. The entry pass intercepted by Onowaku. Pass ahead to Johnny Flynn, who gets hacked. Third foul on Pena. If you're in a double team in the backcourt, you got to make sure that you get people back. And here, three on one break. Look at Harris avoid the charge. Corey Fisher tried to sell it, but Harris on three on one delivered it nicely. Forced Fisher, who was in no man's land, to at least come up and commit. And that's when you get the open guy streaking to the hoop. You know, the foul situation could be interesting for Villanova. This is a team that only plays eight guys. They got four guys with two fouls and one guy with three. Syracuse only plays seven, sometimes eight. A couple of those guys, Rottens and Onowaku battling injuries. And Jackson was shaken up on that last possession as Flynn hits both free throws. Syracuse back within 14, trailed by as many as 21. Now this is a good time for going over to get away from the quick shots and go back to moving the ball. You know, forcing Syracuse to play a little defense, and that might take them out of rhythm going on the offensive end, but they seem to have fouled a little bit. To the corner it goes, and the three is off the mark for Anderson. Flynn looking to run for Syracuse. Devendorf got caught in the air and turned it over. Fisher, tailing.
Adams by Devendorf, and he'll go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Well, how many times have you seen it? A guy makes a mistake on one end and compounds it with a foul on the other. Devendorf up in the air, no place to go. You give him credit for hustling back. He's the guy that made the turnover and the first guy back, but, you know, sometimes discretion is the better part. Should have let him have the layup. Instead, an opportunity for a three-point play and a seat on the bench as Devendorf commits his first foul. Eighth against the Orange. And just in Syracuse is kind of showing a little bit of life on the offensive end. You know, that's definitely a setback. Not only does it kind of kill the momentum, but one of your best offensive players now is sitting on the bench. Lead back to 17. Fisher with eight off the bench today for Villanova. Flynn being dared to shoot that three, and he missed it. Oduaku keeping it alive. And jump ball. It will stay with Syracuse on the possession arrow. Well, you give Lindsay Onowaku some credit now. Even with that hobbled knee, he's willing to get on the floor and go after it. He's attempted a field goal, by the way, in this game officially. Yeah, you got to believe it's troubling him. You know, tendonitis, and there's not a whole lot you can do with it. You get ultrasound, and that's it. And kind of hope it doesn't flare up during the game, or you can forget about it. Jackson has picked up the slack, but he missed that time. His first misfire from the floor. Clark for three. And I'm going to tell you right now, you look at Onowaku, he's not even jumping. Yep. He doesn't have much lift out there. Now he let Harris try to get that rebound. Cunningham, again, he's money from 15 feet. And the lead back to 19 for Nova. Six of seven from the floor for Dante Cunningham. And without question, the most improved player in the Big East. A lot of guys playing well. But Cunningham just means so much to Villanova's attack. And the offense he's found... That Jay Wright has told us in the past, he's already had. He just never really showed it. Meanwhile, Paul Harris with his seventh made three and the first player not named Rick Jackson to get a basket in this game for Syracuse from the field. Only oh, the fifth first half field goal for Syracuse back within 16. Good ball movement by Villanova. Another three. This one for Corey Stokes. Well, the Corey's getting it done. Stokes and Fisher off the bench. And the Villanova bench outscoring Syracuse is 17 to nothing. Another basket inside for Rick Jackson. Good look by Flynn. Well, on one end, Syracuse, their defense just a little bit too lax. And his excellent ball movement by going over. The combination has meant success for going over. On the other end, Rick Jackson on the baseline. They continue to find him, and, you know, you got to keep going to that water hole right there. Jackson got fouled by Dwayne Anderson. Remember Corey Hame and Corey Feldman in the 80s? One of those guys was great actors. How about these two Corys for Villanova? I was kidding when I said they were great actors. <laughs> Corey Fisher, Corey Stokes, they're not acting, they're balling. And Villanova leads it 45-28 over Syracuse. Villanova, Fisher, and Stokes getting it done here off the bench. And Villanova has a 17-point lead. Yeah, and you look at Syracuse, I mean, it's like the tale of two teams at home. You know, very competitive. But on the road, they've lost three consecutive road games. And, you know, quite honestly, it just doesn't seem to have the same effort. And I know Jim Beheim has seen it a couple of times here. His team failed to get back defensively. They failed to move their feet. They started out the game pretty aggressively, though, double teaming out of the zone. But something went haywire. And they won field goals for someone other than Rick Jackson. I remember, you, we talked about those non-conference wins for Syracuse. Kansas, look what the Jayhawks are doing now. They look like a pretty good team. Memphis, obviously. Florida. They also beat Virginia. An ACC squad. Stokes. And that hit the top of the backboard. Didn't go over. And then Jackson turns it over. And another basket for a Corey. This time Fisher. They've combined for 19. Fisher has 10. Stokes with 9. Again, another mental lapse by Syracuse. It's almost like somebody spiked their cornflakes coming in here. They look like they're asleep. 
That ball, Redding, and Mountain is tied up. It'll go to Villanova. I mean, it's more anxiety than anything else. When you're down like this, Jackson obviously wanting to get the ball out and going to break, looking for Flynn. And uh, Corey Fisher, stealthily, or with great stealth. Look at the turnovers today for Syracuse already. Twice as many turnovers as field goals. And the Syracuse foul, it's ninth. That's on Jackson. That's three on him. They can't afford to have him out of the game. He's the only one doing anything offensively. Later today, we've got two great basketball games for you. Michigan, team playing much better this year, going to number one Connecticut to play the Huskies. And then tonight, our Saturday night primetime game presented by DirecTV. We talked about Memphis and the way the Tigers are playing. They'll take on a Gonzaga team that's playing better of late. Well, you talked about Gonzaga, and you think that they're a Final Four team. What about Memphis and what Tyreek Evans is doing there? Well, you know, he's starting to blossom, and it, we knew it would take a while. Uh, you know, all the talk about him ready for the next level, you know, obviously that's what it was, talk. But he's starting to understand how to run that offense and how to play within that offense. And I think Memphis obviously hasn't been challenged yet in Conference USA. Ongenot fouled after he got the rebound following the miss by Routens. That's on Shane Clark. That's his third. So Clark and Pena have three. Reynolds, Fisher, and Anderson with two. And Jackson has three. For Syracuse, only two officials now with Haney's injury. Curtis Shaw, Michael Stevens getting a workout. You know, they're blowing the whistle for three. So. And actually doing a nice job. I mean, for the most part, they've got it covered. You haven't seen too many complaints. But I'll tell you what, Syracuse, if they're going to change strategy, it's the strategy they should have had from the get-go, and that is hammer the boards. They're having trouble scoring. Get to the boards. Get those second-chance opportunities like that one. Well, Andy Rottens had missed all four of his three-point attempts the other night. That's his first field goal after four misses in this game. Syracuse back within 17 inside of two minutes here in the first half. There's Cunningham, who's played beautifully, and he continues to knock down that mid-range jumper. This guy might find himself in the league next year, Lane. Yeah, I mean, look, he's, he's obviously shown some skill right now. You know that he's got the strength, and he's got the determination to be under the board. But what he's doing to Onowaku right now is a direct result of the fact that Onowaku has no lift. And Cunningham knows that. He's not afraid to rise above him and shoot the jump shot. Routens shooting a jump shot, hitting a three. Back-to-back -back threes by Routens. But it's uh, Dante Cunningham from the star of the show so far. Yeah, taking full advantage of the lack of mobility of Renzi Onowaku and all of those jumpers right there, except for that when Jackson comes out on him. But most of the jumpers have been in the face of Onowaku, who, again, we talked about his lack of, of mobility. Can't really rise and challenge, but take nothing away from, you know, terrific job that Cunningham, Cunningham has had, knocking jump, jump shots down. Missed only one shot. Also has two assists in this game with those three boards and 16 points. And the thing about it is probably a little bit different than in the past in these face-up jumpers. He's squaring the shoulders. You know, he's got a nice release. Good old muscle memory. Coming from practice, practice, practice. Fisher off target. And another Villanova foul. This one on Corey Stokes. So Dante Cunningham, believe it or not, is the only player in Villanova not to commit a foul. Usually because uh, he's underneath, he's getting called for fouls, but not today. And Syracuse staying in the game with free throws. 16 of 23 so far in this one. And Harris will shoot two. Harris now 6 of 7 at the line in the game. They came in 299 in the country in foul shooting. And it's not like Syracuse doesn't work on it. We, we talked about that with Jim Beheim and, and how much he's got these guys working on their free throws. And Jackson and Onowak in particular, how much time they spend shooting them. Good hustle by Onganot, another jump ball situation. And it will stay with Syracuse. Yeah, but what it comes down to, you know, you're sometimes afraid to tinker with 
a guy's free throw mechanics, particularly an upperclassman. But in the end, I, I think that they have to continue to work on it, but they've got to do it in a way, you know, the, the added practice makes perfect. Well, it's not really practice makes perfect. It's perfect practice makes perfect. Dangerous pass there by Harris into the backboard line. And Rottens turned it over, traveled. 13 turnovers by Syracuse. Again, too much in a hurry. I think it's the anxiety factor right now. Syracuse hooks up at that scoreboard. And both Routens and Flynn trying to do things a little bit too quickly. Well, Donovan McNabb played a little basketball when he was at Syracuse as well as football. Might be able to use him. He can handle it a little bit. So can this guy, Johnny Flynn. Johnny Flynn's first field goal, though, of the game, but it does get Syracuse back within 13, under a minute to go. A 9-3 run by the road team. A chance of let's go orange coming from the Syracuse fans here in Philly. Redding trying to create some space way off the mark. Great block by Ongenot on Anderson. Syracuse can hold for one. You got to make a move now. Six seconds left. And yeah, I don't know if Paul Harris sees it. And he does. Harris way off the mark from three. Johnny Flynn didn't even touch it on that last possession. And they called a foul on Syracuse on that shot with one-tenth of a second left. They're going to say that it was on the rebound, so it's a two-shot foul, so not a three-shot foul. They put Syracuse in the double bonus, so Villanova will shoot two here. Cunningham will go to the line. Well, Paul Harris obviously just rushed that shot way out of his range, and there's the over-back right there. A legitimate call. Some people may say, okay, it was the end of the half. You didn't necessarily have to make that call. No advantage, but they call what they see. That's the job of the officials. Whether it's two or three. Yeah, whether well, it's two or three officials, right. Again, Jim Haney out. He suffered an apparent Achilles injury early in the game. So Curtis Shaw, Michael Stevens working uh, the game the rest of the way unless uh, Haney can come back in the second half. Villanova will take a 15-point lead into the locker room. Great first half for Dante Cunningham. 25 free throw attempts for Syracuse, and yet they're down by 15. Do you have some extra five-hour energy in your bag, then you could learn uh, the orange here? Dante Cunningham trying to pick up where he left off in the first half where he was 7 of 8. Villanova, as the team does, they get the rebound and the putback. Clark will go to the line for the three-point play. Everything went right for Villanova, with the exception of Syracuse making its free throws, but 13 turnovers by the Q, six by Devendorf, four by Flynn. And they combined for just one field goal, Flynn and Devendorf. And you talk about, again, getting hurt inside. Arunzi Onowaku not starting this half. He's got his warm-up on. Doesn't look like he's going to play anymore. Yeah, he had no field goal attempts and only two rebounds, and he's such an important factor inside, obviously. Again, battling that sore knee, and Syracuse, as Jim Bam said, just not the same team with Onowaku's injury. Harris with the miss. Rick Jackson did play well in the first half for Syracuse with 12 points, five field goals. Foul before the shot. On the drive by Cunningham. That's on Jackson. That's four on him. So now one. Onowaku's banged up. And now Jackson's got four fouls. And Syracuse only goes seven, sometimes eight deep. Well, you can attribute the foul trouble inside to the mobility of Dante Cunningham, who has turned and faced and shot jumpers. And when defenders Jackson or Onowaku come up on him, he'll put it on the floor and go right around him. Another basket for Dante Cunningham, and that gets the lead back to 20. It doesn't matter who is in his way. Dante Cunningham, a man possessed today. He's got 20 in this game. Flynn short with a three. Now 
Now, the end of the first half sequence was key. Syracuse had an opportunity to cut into that lead, but uh, Paul Harris took the final shot and missed it, and Syracuse committed a foul as Devendorf scores, and it'll go to the line. But Cunningham hit the free throws to make it 53-38. They had scored the first five points of this half until Devendorf gets that basket. And we talked about the comeback wins here, even down to Cornell by double figures and came back to win that game. Third foul on Dwayne Anderson. First on Villanova in the half. Although those are some November and early December comebacks. And you mentioned it, they're going to walk you out of the ball game. This is a team that's going to have difficulty competing on the boards, even though they finished the half with a four-point advantage, four-rebound advantage. Going over turnover, here's Flynn. Ongenot finds Devendorf. He's got two field goals in a row after not hitting a shot in the first half. Syracuse back within 14. They're only playing 14 minutes in the first half. Devendorf is, I, I assume, bench because of the six turnovers. And I'm sure a message was delivered by that benching. He's come out here smoking. Baseline cut off by Ungadot and Harris. And the combination of the turnovers and the lack of hustle, that's an offensive foul. Yep. First one on Cunningham, Ungadot. Taking a head to the gut. Second Villanova team foul. Yeah, first half, Eric Divinov failed to hustle back defensively, turn the ball over. But he got the wake up call, and there you see Ongenau doing a nice job of holding his ground as Dante Cunningham blows him over. Divinov one on three. Ongenau with good hustle, and he called a timeout. Almost the seventh turnover by Devendorf, but Oak get out there to jump on the loose ball and call for time. In Philadelphia, Len, I don't know if Blue Man Group is performing after the game, but check this guy out drinking what I can only assume is apple juice. How does he do that, <laughs> by the way? How does he get it through the mask there? I hope he's on scholarship. You wouldn't want that hard-earned tuition going towards blue costumes and beverages. <laughs> Syracuse got it back after a miss. Another one inside as Devendorf got it blocked by Cunningham. Jim Beheim wanted a foul, but no call. It's a key time for the road team here down 14. They might get a layup on the other end. Flynn gets control and scores. And Syracuse within 12. No well, turn of events. Jay Wright wants his guys to start taking care of the ball a little bit. That's what's getting Syracuse back in this ball game. Eight straight points by Syracuse. Scotty Reynolds, a quiet first half, too strong with a three, but Clark there for another opportunity for Villanova. Reynolds into the lane with a pull-up. Long enough. And an opportunity for Syracuse to get it to maybe nine if Rottens can hit. Not there, though, from three. And then Reynolds tripped up. Third Syracuse foul. And how, and on and on. how often have you seen it? You know, you have two lines on the floor, the pro line and the college line, and, and Routens pulled up behind that pro line, the red line, as though he thought that was the three-point line. I mean, very carefully got behind that line instead of stepping up, maybe another step. You're right looking a little concerned as Syracuse has made a bit of a run here to get back within 12 and had an opportunity in the last possession to get it to single figures. Well, they got to get back to better ball movement. First half, you know, they executed extraordinarily well, making the extra pass and doing a lot of positive things. Good ball movement in here. A little bit too much handle to turn over by Cunningham. Not attacking the defense the way they did in the first half. Turnovers this half by Villanova. Remember, just two officials, Curtis Shaw and Michael Stevens, in this game with Jim Haney suffering an Achilles injury at the start of the contest. Ongenot off the mark, but Redding shoves Paul Harris. Third team foul on Villanova. Three personals on Redding. Four players for Villanova have three fouls. How about this comeback by Syracuse without Arinze Onuaku? It doesn't even look like he's going to play in this second half after a struggling in the first half of that knee injury. Well, you can fault Villanova, the turnovers, the quick shots, many of the things that 
they didn't do in the first half, and they were successful here. They're kind of rushing a little bit. What a move by Johnny Flynn. Great handle and finish, and Syracuse is back within 10. 10 points now for Flynn. And nothing run by Syracuse. They go to Cunningham on Ungadak. And Cunningham gets the roll. He's got 22. Soft, soft, soft. Getting it up there on the rim with the backspin. And we've seen a variety of turnaround jumpers, face-up jumpers from Dante Cunningham. Davendorf toss shot with the left hand. And Cunningham controls. Reynolds fouled by Devendorf. His second. Fourth on Syracuse. Well, Johnny Flynn obviously trying to make stuff happen. Gets in the paint. The nice floater. But Dante Cunningham, as he has done all afternoon, has an answer. Syracuse has lost three of its last four. Villanova's won four straight games. And looks like one of the upper echelon teams in the Big East today. Reynolds hits a three to push it to a 15-point lead again. Syracuse had cut into the lead, forcing five Villanova turnovers in this half, getting 10 points off of those turnovers, but Nova certainly has an answer. How about that shot? Two beauties in a row by him. Well, he's taking it upon himself right now. The offense is stalled, and good point guards will create for themselves and others, trying to jumpstart this team's offense in the half court. Another offensive foul called on Cunningham. Boy, Ungenot's given Syracuse some good hustle minutes in the second half. Well, speaking of hustle, obviously, Johnny Flynn, as I mentioned before, getting in the paint. You know, making some tough shots, but nevertheless giving his team a lift. And on the other end, you're right, I mean, Ungenot's really playing Cunningham tight, Cunningham getting frustrated. Playing short with that jumper. Meanwhile, Villanova's turned it over six times this half, only five giveaways the entire first half by the Wildcats. Reynolds looking for another three. Harris the rebound. He'll push it. Flynn into the lane, won't go, but a foul call. Later today on ESPN, the top ranked team in the country will be in action as Connecticut takes on Michigan at 6 Eastern time. And then our Saturday night primetime game presented by DirecTV features Memphis and Gonzaga. Should be a great one tonight from Spokane. Burgess fans were up early. Be there for game day. A three hour time difference yeah. from the East Coast. And I'm sure they were there to see Reese, right? <laughs> Forget Hubert and Coach Knight and Bellis and, and Dick. That was an 8 a.m. start for those guys. Again, the turnover story in the second half, none by Syracuse. Flynn has the last eight points for the Orange back within 11. And a foul on the floor by Flynn covering Reynolds. And he just had a two. Very unusual. Johnny Flynn, usually well-mannered out there on the floor. And that's just a sign of the frustration Syracuse's experience. And, and Flynn in particular, as they try to come back, only to have Villanova find answers. Sixteen foul on Syracuse. Reynolds will shoot the technical. One more coming for Reynolds. You see the body contact right there. Johnny Flynn, not sure he had much to say, or shouldn't have had much to say on the contact. And Flynn now with three fouls. And Reynolds gets both free throws. Every time Syracuse gets close to that 9 or 10 point mark, they seem to give up a big play in the other end, but this time Routens makes a play, and then it's foul. And Jay Wright beside himself for his guys allowing themselves to get trapped. 
And also Dwayne Anderson picking up his fourth foul. 16 foul on Villanova. Yeah, that's going to go to the bench. That just compounded the, the issue, but getting trapped on that side, you got to try and get the ball out quickly. Get it on the sideline, get it towards the middle quickly, knowing that Syracuse wants the trap on the inbound. Even Dorf finds Rottens off the screen, short with a three-point try. Good box out by Corey Stokes. Fisher, great spin, finds Reynolds. Back to Fisher. Harris with the rebound, then another Villanova foul. That's on Corey Fisher. And that's four on him. 17 foul and one and one for Syracuse. And think about the first half, several of those silly fouls fouling the jump shooter. Coming back to haunt Villanova right now. So Syracuse, 299th in the country entering this week in free throw percentage at 64%. Going to be at the line for the rest of the game. Anderson and Fisher both with four. Clark Redding and Payne with three. So far Syracuse, 21 of 29 at the free throw line. Chance to get some points with the clock stop. And Paul Harris gets them both. Eight out of ten for him at the line. And again, Onowaku has not played this half. Mark J. Wright told us sometimes when Syracuse goes to that smaller lineup, they have some problems. And right now they've got Onganot still playing the five position, covering Cunningham with both Onowaku and Jackson on the bench. Redding finds Cunningham, and he got fouled. They'll go to the line for a pair. 17 foul on Syracuse now. Dante Cunningham you know, using some IQ, staying low on the baseline behind the defense, almost a blind spot. And when the penetrator starts making a move and the defense steps up, he's right there for the dig. Ongenot picks up his third foul. Now Dante Cunningham telling us that you know, the biggest difference in his game is Flynn returns. Is uh, the fact that he really worked on his jumper in the offseason. And it shows. His scoring average up almost seven points per game from last year. You see his totals for his first three seasons compared to this year. He was one of the more improved players in the league last year. Oh, well, you know, that's what you're looking for. Not only being a year older, but a year better. Stevendorf tried to hit on Gennott. And turned it over. Kind of a good thought. Devendorf drew the defense towards him. And only not when you're inside the paint, you got a guy penetrating. You got to show hands and have your hands ready to catch. Only not's hands are at his side. Never reacted. We're being told uh, that Arinze Onowaku, as Syracuse commits another foul, is actually okay, even though uh, he has that uh, sore knee. And Jim Beheim just electing to go with the smaller lineup. We mentioned that both Onowaku and Jackson have been on the bench for a good part. And just as we say that, Onowaku is going to come into the game as Honganot just picked up his fourth foul. Well, he had his warm-up on and kind of sat back like he wasn't playing. I guess they have to use him right now with Honganot in foul trouble. And Honganot gave him a nice little lift. All in the ball game, but you can clearly see Onowaku having trouble getting some lift. Right there, he jumped about six inches off the floor to get that rebound. Three rebounds for him now after that board and hasn't even attempted a shot on the other end. Flynn somehow got it to Devendorf. Leaves it for Onowaku, who slaps it in off the glass. That was a nifty play by Devendorf. Had a couple of guys open on either side of the lane. Kind of no look. Nobody picked up Reynolds. And Clark got the rebound. Couple of tips and Clark got it to go. Syracuse quickly back up the court. Devendorf. Rebounded by Stokes. Still a lot of time left in this game in Syracuse back in striking distance, but for the fourth time today, a foul on a three-point attempt. Two by each team. Jim Beheim's team down 13. 11.53 to play. On the bench right now, he's got 24 points to lead the Wildcats. 
Well, Syracuse has come back from double-figure deficits four times already this season. They were down 21 in this game. Villanova with 19 points off the bench from the Corys. Fisher and Stokes. And now Stokes shooting three free throws after the foul by Devendorf. Fifty-one combined free throw attempts, forty-one fouls called in this game by these two officials, Curtis Shaw and Michael Stevens, after Jim Haney had to leave early due to an injury. And that was serious. I mean, obviously they are trying to cover more of the floor with just two guys. Uh, but they haven't really, they haven't really made any calls that people could legitimately disagree with. And they've done a great nice, job. Nice coverage job. Both Jackson and Ongenad on the bench for Syracuse with four fouls. Onowaku playing banged up with a sore right knee. Oh, nice pass underneath to Flynn, but he blew the layup. And Pena got the rebound. Reynolds finds Stokes. Buries a three! Villanova going back to inside-out penetration. Going down low against the zone in their final success. Devendorf able to answer with a triple of his own. Meanwhile, Corey Stokes with 14 points. Corey Fisher with 10 off the bench for Villanova as well. Pena on Onowaku. Pena will let it fly and hit the jumper. Well, between Pena and that shot and Cunningham throughout the afternoon, you can see what drills the big men for Villanova work on. Their turn and face. A wild shot there by Flynn, one on two. Reynolds down the baseline. And Harris tried to tip it to Onowaku, but it went right to Clark. Syracuse, Villanova's lead is back to 19. Well, that's a nice job of penetration by Scotty Reynolds, and you saw how the zone kind of collapsed to try to cut off that lane. And again, an ability to get into the paint, battle on the boards. Villanova finding the touch again after a kind of an early second half stumble. 11-3 run by Villanova. Well, we are just four days away from North Carolina Duke meeting for the first time this year. Duke's got Miami today and coming off that blowout loss at Clemson. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, you can't dwell on the loss at Clemson. And I've always been a believer when you play that poorly. You know, you just got to forget about it. You got to throw it away. People say, don't forget this. But, you know, you start weighing in minds, and you know, there's always a little bit of doubt creeping in. So, see what happens with Duke upcoming. Onuaku fouled, and he'll go to the line. Pena picks up his fourth. And Onuaku, who struggled from the free throw line, just 19% in Big East games, 35% overall at the free throw line. Now take a look at that ball, a little bit of rotation, but he doesn't have enough of it that he's gonna get a favorable bounce. You know, when you look at the great shooters, even the good shooters, the seams on the ball are horizontal, and they make a point of doing that. Right now, Onowaku has it lined up, and you see how the ball turns over, seams aren't horizontal, you just don't get a good touch, a good feel. And Jim Beheim told us before the game that his form is okay until he starts pushing it instead of shooting it. Having to roll off his fingers. Is, is, he, what he, instead of rolling off his fingers, he's pushing the ball up there. Onowaku committing a foul there. Now take a look at his release. He kind of pushes it. Doesn't get enough of the rotation. And that's why it either bangs up there or when it hits the rim, he doesn't get a favorable bounce. That backspin kind of softens the shot. And the good shooters have it. And you look at this rotation right there. Hey, 
Now you're going to take a look at the rotation here on this free throw. And you'll see Corey Stokes. You see how the seams are horizontal and the turn over the ball. You get favorable bounces that way. He's 7 of 8 at the line. And the lead is 21 again for Villanova. Devendorf too long with the three. Routens, good hustle. And threw it off the leg of Fisher. Well, you saw the score. Notre Dame losing by 14 at UCLA. The Irish struggling. Georgetown struggling. And Syracuse perhaps on its way to its fourth loss in five games. And Jim Bam was saying if, if you lose one at some point that maybe you should win, it's easy to get on a losing streak as Quinn hits the three. Which one of those three, Georgetown, Notre Dame, and Syracuse, you think has the best chance to turn around and still have a, a really good season? As Redding connects. Well, I mean, you're taking a look at their schedules and, you know, upcoming after Villanova, they've got Syracuse has Connecticut, Georgetown, and they play Villanova at home. You know, that's not easy. I, I just think that, you know, both of those teams are going to be struggling. Notre Dame went through probably one of the toughest stretches you ever could playing all the highly ranked teams. And then they lose to Cincinnati. They've got Louisville coming up. They've got South Florida who beat Marquette yesterday. So there is no, there is no easy path. Not in this conference. Antonio Pena has just fouled out. This is uh, the largest deficit, time the largest deficit this season for Syracuse. They've been down by 21 on several occasions in this game. And if Syracuse loses, it will fall to 6-5 and five in the conference and actually be behind Providence, a team that just lost to. In this game, you know, this is where Syracuse has reestablished their road con confidence, as we said before, because obviously you've got to feel that you can compete on the road. And right now, you know, Syracuse on their way to their fourth road loss. And as you mentioned, the fourth loss out of five games. And, you know, you start, you start losing these games consecutively and you start getting on that second page of yep. our standing. And it's almost out of sight, out of mind. Do you think, and I know we're still a month away, but that the NCAA Tournament Committee will consider just how brutal this league is when it starts to pick teams. It, it, there was talk at the beginning of the year that maybe 10 teams would get in, but now people are saying, well, they shouldn't even get seven in. I don't know about that. I, I, you know, look, you have, to, you have to consider the competitiveness of this league. You know, if you do that, if you don't, then you're saying that, you know, what Cincinnati's been able to do doesn't really amount to anything. They've been beating some people. What you're saying is some of the other teams in the lower half, you know, that their, their jobs weren't getting done. Onowaku able to jump that time. Good feed from Devendorf. You know, St. John's with the win over Notre Dame. You know, Seton Hall with the win over Georgetown. You know, anybody can jump up and bite you in this conference. Well, Marquette was leading the Big East despite right. Connecticut being number one in the country until last night when Marquette lost to South Florida. Cunningham fouled to go back to the line. Villanova leading by 17. Or the Big East regular season championship, you never know. No, I and mean, we talked about it before. With this schedule, a team gets on a slide and all of a sudden now you're a hot team like Villanova. You've got an opportunity to climb that ladder. And we talked about before the game that in the last eight meetings between these two teams, the team that had the most rebound was the one that won. And right now, Villanova's a, a plus three in rebounding. They've done a nice job. And we shot the ball extremely well in the second half as well. A oh, great block by Cunningham. Syracuse trying to get back. Stokes hard to the basket. Offensive foul. Oh. They're going to score the basket, though. Uh, which means that before contact was made, that the ball left his hands. And here you see him bearing down on it. Uh, first of all, if the basket counted, because the contact was made while the ball was still in his hands. And secondly, I'm not so sure that there wasn't a lean in it. Now they're saying they didn't count the basket. Okay, that's right. Well, he hits the three. And Syracuse back within 14. 83-69, Villanova. Wildcats trying to win their fifth straight, and they host Marquette on Tuesday night. That'll be on campus at the Pavilion. 
On ESPN2, Cunningham short. Oh, Demendorf let Redding fly in there and get the rebound. Stokes, an open look. The tip by Shane Clark. Board work. Getting it done. Here's Rottens again. Jackson playing with four fouls, got to the loose ball. Jackson had a really good first half. Here's Flynn, and he was fouled on the way to the basket. Just as we mentioned it, the team that's had the most rebounds in the last eight meetings is the team that's won this game, and right there, Shane Clark. Out of nowhere, no body on anyone. And he gets a nice, clean flush. You know, in that zone, you've got to be able to find when the shot goes up. You've got to find somebody to at least make some contact. Especially on. Stokes is his third. Especially if you're Syracuse, obviously you're having trouble closing this deficit. You can't give up second chance opportunities without a fight. He is 15 for Villanova. Flynn, one out of two on that trip. He's got 20 points in the game. And Stokes lost it out of bounds. The defense there by Routens after Stokes stopped his dribble. Double team doesn't come, and Jackson can't score off the window, and he's going to get called for his fifth foul. So Jackson's fouled out. Onowaku playing with a sore knee. 12.6 rebounds for Jackson, but five fouls. Well, Rick Jackson got the job done in the first half, at least kept Syracuse within striking distance. Obviously, in this half, Syracuse is getting bowled over. But, you know, now the inside game is literally gone. You take a look at the players out there. Maybe Paul Harris can post up a little bit, hit the offensive glass. Onga not much better at, you know, taking charges and getting in the way, so to speak. And, you know, he can, he can sneak around and get some board as well. But I just don't think right now they'll be able to compete. Cunningham has missed five in a row after hitting his first six free throws, but the extra possession here for Villanova. Reynolds going baseline. Redding able to save it before the backcourt violation. Look how strong Cunningham's trying to post up. Onganaut doing a nice job of fighting him, but he lost his way. Onganaut's got to be careful. He's got four fouls, make it five. So both Jackson and Onganaut have fouled out. Cunningham's going back to the foul line. So Dante Cunningham worked for that one. Strong post up. Look at how he's posting up, trying to get Onganaut on his hip now when Onganaut tries to play in front. And using that strength, nice little drop step. The fake gets Onganaut off his feet. And, you know, smart play by Villanova going after another big man. He's kind of picking him off and putting him on the bench. This long rivalry. Syracuse actually 5-4 and four here at Wachovia against Villanova. 63rd meeting. And likely going to break the mark for most combined points between these two schools. Villanova's most points against Syracuse is 93, and they got 92 right now. One of the things that's helped Syracuse remain competitive in this half has been turnovers by Villanova. Syracuse with 20 points off turnovers. Dante Cunningham with 31 points matching the season high and a career high as well. And the most points for Villanova ever in a game with Syracuse. Devendorf can't knock down the three. Johnny Flynn gets to the loose ball, finds Onowaku, who missed the jam, but he's fouled. Well, tomorrow, a terrific doubleheader of NBA games on ABC, your NBA destination. Coverage starting at 12.30 Eastern with GMC NBA Countdown. 
And one is the Spurs in Boston to play the Celtics, followed by LeBron versus Kobe, Lakers and Cavs. Los Angeles and Cleveland with the top two winning percentages in the NBA. And you just saw an example of from that missed free throw, how important it is to foul on a walk instead of giving him that dunk. I don't think you can take any dunks away from these two guys. Although you can take a triple-double away from LeBron James, apparently, as they took a rebound away from that great effort against the Knicks the other night at the Garden. As Villanova touched it last, Syracuse still hanging around, even with the missed free throws by Onowaku and the missed dunk as well. well you couldn't take any rebounds away from Kobe on that 61-point night, but he didn't have any. <laughs> Did he have any assists? That's the real question. At three, yeah. from what I recall. Routens traveled, got Clark in the air and lifted the pivot foot. And that was uh, nothing was going right for me today, look, on Andy Routens' face. Well, he got Clark in the air and the officials are predisposed to guys getting fouled shooting threes. It's happened four times in this game, two by each squad, but Routens elected not to draw contact there from Clark. But only three turnovers this half by Syracuse. Yeah, we're going over. They're just going to run time off the clock. You know, milk it. Glenn got a hand on that pass. Reynolds, no, another tip for Clark. I guess they don't have to. Again, you're going to take shots like that and have guys going to the offensive glass with that type of success. Mountains, no, but it bounces to Flynn. Here's Joseph. Off the mark. Fisher. Good ahead to Reynolds. Easy two for Villanova. Again, excellent use of the bounce pass. And this will likely be the second time in three games that Syracuse has allowed 100 points to the opponent. Stevendorf scores and will go to the foul up. Welcome our viewers watching in Europe and the Middle East on ESPN America. A new member of the ESPN family of networks. This premium channel will broadcast over 800 hours of live and as live sporting events from Major League Baseball, NHL, and NCAA College Basketball and Football. Don't forget Texas and Nebraska up next here on ESPN. At 6 o'clock Eastern, number one Connecticut will be in action taken on Michigan. Then tonight in our primetime game, it's Memphis at Gonzaga. Two minutes to go here. Villanova by 15. And they give Redding a free shot at the hoop. Twice in 10 days, Syracuse giving up 100 points. That was just too easy right there. I think... Seems like the orange, at least on defense, packed it in on that one. And they held West Virginia to 61 points earlier this week. Gave up 100 to Providence in a loss prior to that. Fisher gets two inside. The Villanova's just done a nice job, whether man or zone, that Syracuse has been playing, getting behind that zone and being able to find guys open. Steven Dorf, another opportunity at a three-point play. Go back to the studio and check in with Ryan Burr. All right, Dave, they are underway. Texas and Nebraska. Longhorns out to the quick two-zip lead. We will keep you updated on that as we uh, finish things up in Philadelphia. Back to you, Dave. And we're 129 away from doing so. And how about this Villanova team? Going to be five straight wins for the Wildcats. They will host Marquette Tuesday. We'll be here for that game on ESPN2. And Villanova, at the Pavilion, where that game will take place, has won its last 25 games. And Marquette's coming off its first loss in conference play, falling at South Florida last night. Cunningham travel. Well... If you're Jim Beheim, what are you thinking about your basketball team? Other than the win over West Virginia, your defense has really struggled of late after a great non-conference season with wins over Kansas, Florida, and Memphis. Yeah, I mean, look, during this season, Jim Beheim has a lot to quibble about about his defense, but he also recognizes he's got a lot of guys that are dinged up, not playing 100%, and that has a tendency to kind of throw you out of balance. But make no mistake about it, injury or no injury, some of the effort or lack thereof 
that we saw particularly in the first half when Syracuse didn't get back defensively, turning the ball over, particularly his guard. You know, that's the kind of stuff that the injuries itself shouldn't make any difference whatsoever. Joseph missed the three. Dante Cunningham, maybe the most improved player in the Big East, tied a career high with 31 today. He got 31 earlier this season against Fordham, but he's doing it against a rival, Syracuse, today. How about Shane Clark, 14 points, 10 rebounds. And the Corys, Corey Fisher and Corey Stokes combining for 30 points off the bench. Yeah, it's a hot team in Villanova. Fifth game in a row that they've won. And, you know, this team have found the formula. Excellent ball movement. You know, attacking the glass. And just getting quality play from inside Dante Cunningham. Villanova will go to 19 and 4, 7 and 3 in the Big East. Syracuse will fall to 18 and 6, and 6 and 5 in conference play. And Nova staying in the hunt. First time Jim Beheim's Orange have allowed 100 or more points twice in a single season, and it's happened in the last 10 days. 102 85. Villanova routes Syracuse.